What do you do when BD on your car causes your, well, block to crack? So what do you do when your block cracks for really stupid reasons in your all-wheel drive Mustang? Well, you get a new short block, of course. Welcome to episode 32 of the all-wheel drive Mustang project, Project Traction. If you've been following this build, you know that I had a little snafu last year, last fall, where I had some vibration issues. And the result of that is that the bell housing bolts came loose and loaded the back of the block of the aluminum coyote block funny and basically cracked the block. And that is not actually that unusual, I found out, but what is unusual in my case is that it also the crack uh, propagated up the side of the block and into the water jacket, therefore it's complete garbage, right? So anyways, the goal in the off season here was to fix that. And so I used it as an opportunity to um, get something that kind of already wanted anyways, which is a lower compression built short block to be able to crank up the boost in the future. So uh, working with uh, VMP Performance, they helped me out to secure a Ford Illuminator short block, um, the nine and a half to one compression um, version of that. I also got uh, ARP head studs, some GT500 um, head gaskets, and then some newer uh, GT350 timing chains and a few other ancillaries to put the whole thing together. So, but to make all that happen, the, the first task was to get the engine out of the car. And so, Let's, uh, let's get into that, there's a lot to cover. I won't bore you with all the details, but of course there was a lot of prep before the engine could be pulled out. Uh, first the supercharger was taken off and all the hoses and wiring, uh, drive shafts, basically the whole front suspension. And then it was time to actually drop the whole engine and drivetrain out from the bottom. The goal was to try to drop the whole engine and transmission as one unit um, out the bottom. This actually worked fairly well, but I was uh, I went very slow and raised it up a little bit at a time. Um, the only actual challenge was the AC compressor. I didn't want to discharge it, right? So I left it hooked to the body, if that makes sense. And so I, I would raise it a couple inches and check, and I really had to kind of squeeze the AC compressor past the engine um, to eventually get the engine to clear the body. Here you can see I realized I didn't unplug the transfer case control wire. That was the only flub of this whole thing. And I'll have to replace that connector. Um, it just pulled out, pulled the pins out of the connector. But in the big picture of things, it all worked out pretty well. And here you can see the uh, kind of downfall of the comical number of uh, 2x4s and 2x6s I used to uh, support the engine on the little dollies is every time you turn the engine, they would want to rotate on those two by sixes. But anyways, it worked out pretty well. And uh, with the th help of my son, we got it out from underneath the car in preparation of getting it on a stand. Then with the help of my friend Derek's uh, Coyote lifting plate and my trusty engine hoist, I got the transmission separated from the engine and then mounted on my uh, engine stand. Side note, I uh, borrowed that engine stand from my friend Richard about 25 years ago and uh, never returned it. So hopefully I have a, do a better job of getting uh, Derek's uh, Coyote lifting plate back to him. Then it was just a simple task of removing all the components uh, from the existing, uh, you know, crack short block that I'm going to reuse on the new illuminator motor. Uh, basically the head, some of the timing components, oil pan, uh, oil pickup, etc. It's really kind of a shame because besides the cracked block, uh, everything was in excellent condition. As you can see here, the cylinders were great. Everything just looked like basically brand new, even though it actually has kind of a lot of miles, about 72,000 miles on it. So anyways, I got everything cleaned up and, and prepared to put on the new short block. Then the exciting day came when the new uh, short block arrived from uh, VMP Performance. A 
unboxing the new short block was uh, pretty exciting so I quickly uh, got it up in the air and mounted on uh, my well my borrowed uh, engine stand here in preparation of uh, transferring all the parts over from the old uh, long block as I've already mentioned uh, in addition to the new uh, short block I also use a, this as an excuse to put in some ARP uh, head studs, um, GT500 head gaskets, I got a new water pump, uh, put in a new um, timing sprocket uh, for the timing chain and a bunch of other upgraded parts while the whole car was, uh, or the whole engine was already apart and out of the car. Stepping back a bit here, uh, what makes the Illuminator short block uh, different from a production block? Well, first it starts out with a production Gen 3 um, Coyote block, you know, so that's the spray bore block. And then here you can see the dished low compression um, forge pistons. Um, I think they're Molly pistons. And on the inside, of course, it has forge uh, H-beam rods. And what I like about it too is it also uh, keeps the oil squirters, which will help uh, keep the bottoms of the pistons or the piston crowns cooler for running higher boost. Once the heads were back on and torqued, I proceeded to install the new uh, GT350 timing chains, Boss 302 tensioners, and the uh, boundary uh, crank sprocket. Before putting the custom all-wheel drive oil pan back on the new uh, long block, I wanted to do some modifications to try to prevent these cracks in the future. It's quite common on other all-wheel drive cars to have the oil pan be structural or otherwise tied into the uh, um, transmission bell housing to help spread the loads created by the front differential. And so I took some inspiration from the 2020 and newer GT500 and added some ears to the oil pan to tie into the um, steel uh, bell housing I'm using with the TR6060. I used the old block and the actual bell housing as a jig and proceeded to uh, weld everything in place. Um, we'll see how much internet flack I get over these wells, but uh, I think it looks pretty good actually. So anyways, after a little bit of paint, it is ready to go back on the now assembled uh, long block and getting prepped to go back in the car. Well, I hope you found that interesting. Uh, the long block is basically ready to go back into the, uh, into the car. But there's a few other things I want to get done here uh, before it all goes back together. The biggest being the exhaust. And so uh, what I'm going to attempt to do is put GT500 exhaust manifolds and catalytic converters on the car. And if you don't know, um, GT500 exhaust manifolds in, in 350s for that matter have a different bolt pattern than the normal Coyotes, you know, because, you know, Ford. Anyway, so I'm going to try to adapt those. And that will be covered by a future episode. So. Uh, please uh, like and subscribe and, and hit that notification button so you can see the future episodes. I also have an episode dedicated to my new clutch solution. Um, if you've been following the build, you know that my attempt to use a single disc clutch in a relatively heavy supercharged Mustang uh, did not go well. And so I'm proud to announce I've partnered with X-Clutch and I will have a future episode covering, I think, what's going to be an excellent solution to the to the clutch situation. So once again, if you want to see these episodes, please hit that subscribe button, hit that notifi notification button, so you know when the new episodes are out. And until then, uh, thanks for watching.